Hey everyone! So this is Sarah and welcome to my art stream. I am very excited today. Um, excited probably just isn't even the best word for it. I have a lesson plan for um, painting Vermeer's, uh, a, a, it was an oil painting that he did. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure. I think he was Dutch. Anyway, famous artist did an oil painting of, um, it's called A Girl with a Pearl Earring. And he only did like seven paintings in his lifetime. So he didn't do very many. Um, it's very famous. I have posted the picture in the Discord. And um, I'm looking up real quick where Vermeer is from because I'd like to get that right. Um, yes, Dutch. Haha. <laughs> so I remembered that correctly. Good. Uh, so if you go, if you look down here at my Discord server, there's also a button on my page where you can go to that server and I've got a picture of it that we will be using as a reference photo. Um, like I said, he originally did this in oil, but we're going to be doing it in acrylic. And this, this particular um, painting is a little bit of an adventure for both of us because I have not had a chance to really look at this lesson plan before. Um, someone else wrote this lesson plan. And uh, it happens to use colors that I don't normally use in my class. So I'm gonna go over the colors we're gonna be using what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to mix those colors. So this is like a bonus for this class um, because if you were, say you were following some directions for how to paint something and it said use Payne's Gray. Well, and you look in your bag and you don't have Payne's Gray. We are going to be making Payne's Gray today out of the colors that I have. So this will be a really good lesson because there are colors that are asked for in this that I do, do not have, but you can use these five colors for literally every color, every color. So we're on an adventure today and I'm super excited about it. All right, first things first, let me go over the supplies like I normally do. I've got brown and white, which are, um, this is burnt umber which you can also make actually, um, but I just like to have it, it's handy to have an extra. Um, titanium white, which the titanium part's important. There are other whites, but titanium is the best for mixing. I have a red, yellow, and a blue. The ones that I have are naphthol crimson, uh, uh, sorry, cadmium yellow medium, and Thalo blue or Thalo cyanine blue. Um, I think Thalo is a trademarked red, uh, Grumbacher color, Grumbacher Academy color. So, um, they have other brands. This is Liquitex brand has to use Thalo cyanine, which is the official name for it, but it's Thalo blue. Okay. However, if you have paints, like you have the, the um, heavy body paints, which are the kind that come in the tubes like this, but you just have a brown, a white, a red, a yellow, a blue. That's perfectly okay. Um, it, like you don't have to have these specific colors. I do like you to have the, at least the color family. Now, if you have paints like this, these are called craft paints. Um, this is just one particular brand, but there's Martha Stewart. There's all different kinds of brands. Craft Smart. Um, these are okay. I don't normally paint with these. My classes are not with these. These are very liquidy. And if you are following my class, a lot of times it relies on things drying in a certain amount of time. This does not do that, which means you have to do multiple coats of very, very thin so that they can dry. And you probably want to have your hair dryer handy as well. All right. So I have a palette knife and a palette. I have um, two brushes. I have a size 12 filbert, which is the, the kind that's rounded at the top, but you can also use a flat where it's just snipped across the top. And I have a size six round brush. You could also use a size four or an eight. I just like six because it's kind of in the middle. 
Um, if for some reason you don't have a palette knife, you can also use like a plastic knife out of a um, like to-go package or whatever. Um, let's see. What else do I have? What other goodies? I've got a paint pen. This will be for signing it at the end. You can sign it with regular paintbrush, but I, the paint pen is just easier. Water, that's important. And um, paper towels. Ta-da! So I'm going to go ahead and get a couple paper paper towels handy. And one thing I didn't mention yet, well, two things. One, notice that I'm wearing a uh, an apron. I don't always wear an apron. Like um, when I'm doing watercolor or I'm drawing, I don't wear aprons. But with acrylic paint, acrylic is permanent. So if you get it on your clothes, it's there. It will love you forever. So my recommendation is to wear either clothes you don't care about or an apron. Okay, so. The other thing I did not mention is a canvas and we're doing a portrait. So um, this is going to be, we're, we're going to be doing it up and down like this in the vertical um, orientation. Again, if you want to see the reference photo for today, go to Discord. Again, it's also a button down at the bottom of my page. Just click on Discord and it will take you there. So. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm so excited, guys. All right, I'm going to take a drink of water just to chill my excitement a little bit. Okay. For the first thing we're going to do, we are going to actually mix Payne's Gray. Now, remember, I told you that I don't have Payne's Gray. Notice that was not one of the things I mentioned. Payne's Gray is like a bluish purple gray. It's a very... It's dark and it's actually a really good mixer. So if you were to invest in other colors besides the five that I have, Paints Gray is actually a good one to invest in. In fact, all of the ones that I'm going to be mentioning today are good to have on hand. That way you don't have to mix it every time. However, you can mix it. So today we are going to mix our Paints Gray. Okay, so first things first is we have to get a dark color, right? So to make black, you mix basically all of your colors. You've got red and blue, and then you've got this brown, which has yellow in it. So you're basically it's purple and brown. Today, we're just going to do blue and brown, and that's going to give us our um, gray. So it's not perfectly black. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put maybe, let's see, a drop is like a pea-sized amount. So this would be like three drops of blue. And I'm going to do equal parts brown. Three drops of brown, three drops of blue. Now, I've gotten really good about just eyeballing colors. Um, so you may want to go boop, boop, boop three times, you know, to give yourself the, the pea-sized amount. All right, I'm going to mix these really well. And we're going to see what we get and how Payne's Gray it looks. It might end up looking a little navy, in which case we want to just add a little bit more brown to it. Or we can even add a little red. That is very black looking. So to check, there's a couple things you can do. I usually just wipe and you can do it right on the side here. That's actually pretty teal. Or you can do it on your napkin. Let me get one napkin so I'm not ruining a bunch of different napkins here. That's pretty good, actually. I was thinking it was more teal than it is, but actually I like this. So equal parts blue and brown. Like I said, we're on an adventure together because I'm not used to having to mix my colors like this. I know how to, but um, normally if I, if I want Payne's Gray, I can just go grab Payne's Gray out of my bag. I do have it um, where that art bag is. I don't know, but it, it's fine because you guys probably don't have it since you're, you know, normally I'm, I'm telling you that your supplies, you don't, you just need these five colors. So why would you think differently? 
All right, so I'm going to uh, wipe my um, palette knife here. We're gonna use the large uh, filbert brush, wash brush. So to get it wet the first time when it's first dry, it's gonna be a little stiff. I, I loosened mine earlier when I was talking to you guys, but it's gonna be a little stiff. You're going to put it in your cup, push it down on the bottom, watch how it spreads out and see those bubbles coming to the surface? That's because it's letting all the air out. So you just gently push it down and like let it spread out on the bottom of your cup. That's how you get your cup, your brush ready the first time you're using it. Now I'm just gonna kind of wipe it on the side and I'm going to come in and just, it's got, there's water on my brush. So I'm just picking up some paint on my brush. And then I'm just gonna start doing backwards and forwards motions. Now this is looking quite a bit lighter It's looking very blue to me. You guys may not be able to see this as well, but I'm actually, I think you can see it. If you look, see how this is kind of teal over here? So I think there needs to be a little bit more brown, but the opposite of green is actually red. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set my brush down because this won't take very long. So maybe my, okay, well, I was good. There we go. I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of red, not much. A lot of colors in there. Uh, yes, there are. Hi and welcome. Okay, so I'm just putting a, a pea size amount. I know that doesn't look like it because it's all stretched out, but just a little bit of the red in here. We're going to mix this up and Hopefully what it's going to do too is it'll purple it up a little bit. And Payne's Gray does have a little bit of purple in it, so this is fine. Like I said, this is an experiment for everyone, including myself, because I'm not used to mixing my own Payne's Gray. Okay, so I feel like I'm not going to check the color because clearly that doesn't even help, I guess, because it looked awful black to me before. A lot of sparkle yeah well part of that's the lighting that I've got here um, I actually have a filter over the light um, and it still it still shows a lot I'm gonna get a little bit more water on my brush in fact actually I'm just gonna kind of rinse my brush off because it had that blue so you rinse your brush the same way you get it wet which is just to pretend like you're painting the bottom of the cup okay Let's get some more color here. Yep. It's not perfect, but it's better. Okay. So I'm just going to paint right over what was there before. And there are a lot of colors there because in additive color, which is what we're doing, uh, black basically has every color in it. Oops, let's see if we can keep this straight. So every once in a while, you'll start to get what's called dry brushing. And what that means is see here where I can see the white through the um, paint, that's because it was starting to not have enough lubrication basically. So um, what you do is you just get a little bit more water on your brush. Now, if you wanna get really fancy, there's this stuff called matte medium. And that is even better to mix with um, than water because it gives you like a more silky um, application like it goes on a lot smoother see this is starting to br dry brush rather quickly so I'm gonna have to keep getting some water it's okay if it goes down a little bit um, thinly because we can always paint over it but it is a pain if it's not going down very well at all like if it's just scratching the surface. So hopefully now you can see a lot of colors in there though. I'm seeing that now by turning it in the light. It's kind of pretty. Now we're doing the entire canvas. Ooh, look at that dry brushing. It's awful. 
Well, dry brushing is not awful. I shouldn't say that. There are times when dry brushing is a really good thing. In fact, you'll, if you ever watch Bob Ross videos, he uses that um, a lot, like in his little trees, his happy little trees. Um, Bob Ross, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. We'll just say that I'm a big fan. Now it's funny because I've worked with one of the teachers that uh, one of my teachers, because uh, I used to be like the head basically of the creative department back in when I was in college of the Michaels there, and one of the teachers that taught for me um, said that she used to work with Bob Ross like directly with him, and I guess um, he was very particular. We'll say that that I guess he he really liked things a specific way, and so off camera. Sometimes he could be challenging, I think, to work with. But, you know, I feel like he's a pretty amazing guy. And with that voice, you know, everybody's going to have their flaws, right? Nobody can be perfect. So, all right. We're getting there. Now, I can still see a little bit of the blue in here, but that's okay because Payne's Gray does have blue in it. It's more important that we get it to be, Payne's Gray looks black when you put it down. So, you know, this is, this is what it pretty much looks like for those of you who are not familiar with it. I do like Payne's Gray as a mixer. So like if you wanna make something darker, instead of adding black, like a Mars black or a lamp black, actually Payne's Gray is better because it darkens something without, um, without adding black to it, because black actually muddies it a little bit. So Payne's Gray is a way of just like kind of making something darker without making it muddy. All right, we're getting close. Just a little bit more, I'm almost done. I'm actually really glad that we're gonna be working uh, on a dark background today because I've got my white paper in the background. I did forget to mention that. Um, hopefully you picked up on that when I was talking about the apron but um, it is important to unless you really just don't care about the table that you're um, working on put some kind of paper or something down newspaper or something like that because acrylic paint once it dries it's there it loves you forever all right so now we've got a dark background okay I am going to clean my brush again and you can see my, my water's already dark from before. So you, you pretend like you're just painting the bottom of the cup. <laughs> and I always have to be careful of bringing my brush over my painting because I have a habit of drips happening and that's not okay. We don't want drips on our painting that we just made so well and we just worked so hard on. So keep that in mind, no drips. All right, so the next color, it wants us to use yellow ochre and alizarin crimson. Hang on, it says it wants a muddy red-brown color by mixing Yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, which we have. The naphthol crimson is actually pretty close to that. That's this. Uh, that's just a regular red. And burnt sienna. Okay, so there are three colors here that we don't have. Let's mix them, y'all. This is fantastic. Okay, first things first, we're going to make our yellow ochre. So yellow ochre is kind of an orangish color. It's like a very warm yellow. So um, first things first, I don't know why I'm opening the brown, I need to open the yellow here. We're going to make yellow ochre. So I'm going to put, that's about one, two, three drops. We are gonna put just a tiny bit of red in it, not much, just a little. One drop. And I'm covering the brown back up because I don't even know why I opened it. 
I might end up using brown. I haven't decided yet. We'll see what we get. So we're doing like a warm yellow. That's very orange to me. So maybe, well, I don't want to add too much more yellow because you can do this all day uh, with acrylics, paint thinner was used instead of water. So no, that's actually, you're thinking the right lines, but that's actually oil. So oil has to use either like, um, uh, let's see, what did I used to use? Oh man, my memory. Okay. I used, um, terpenoid is one, um, cause you can get odorless terpenoid. So it doesn't, cause you know, paint thinner obviously has a very strong smell. So terpenoid was one and mineral spirits was the other. So those are two things you could use to thin oil paints. Um, but with these, just water is fine. So, okay. So I'm adding a little bit more yellow. However, we could be going all day at this because I'm just making it bigger and bigger to where the percentage, if you're looking at percentages of colors, the percentage of yellow that's in here, uh, would be so much that you could add a bunch and it wouldn't really move the color. It wouldn't shift the color very much. Um, this is still a small enough amount where this should have shifted the color and it did. So it is kind of a yellow orange. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add just a tiny bit of blue. So blue is the opposite of orange. And I want to put such a small amount. Um, let's see, I'm going to actually rinse, wipe this off here that I don't even want to put it directly in there. I want to just put it right at the edge because I'm putting like half a drop. but the blue will basically kind of brown it up a little bit. Y'all, I'm hoping this works. <laughs> and it looks really, really green to me. That looks so green. Well, this is a lesson. If you're following me at home, kudos. <laughs> Thank you for being on this adventure with me. We need larger amounts of light colors to make a difference. Dark color. Uh, yeah, dark colors, you only need a little. Um, sometimes it depends on what it is. I mean, in this case, clearly I needed even less blue than I actually used. I'm very upset about this. As you can tell. <laughs> this is my upset face, y'all. It's how upset I get. Okay. So that's a really lovely shade of green. It's not what I wanted. We're going to start over. <laughs> okay. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to put... I'm going to do it right next to it. Yellow. This time, I'm going to actually put, it does look like mashed peas. I know. Oh, it's so gross. I mean, some people might like mashed peas. Babies like mashed peas, I think. Some of them. Okay, I'm going to put this little amount of red in the yellow instead of whatever I put before. Pea soup, yes. Yum. <laughs> okay. We're going to try this again. This time, I'm going to actually pick up a little bit of the screen, just a tiny bit, and mix it in. Because we're just trying to tone it down. So if you did mix this green, <laughs> we're not going to let it go to waste. Don't worry. I mean, not completely. I guess that's a, So I'm just picking up a tiny bit. I'm going to mix it in. Yes, that was the correct amount. Oh, it's getting a little bit from the side. Okay, so what it should look like is it should look like 
uh, like pureed um, pumpkin or something. Since we're on the food kick here. That, that right there, that's yellow ochre, y'all. Okay, so. It should look like kind of a brownish orange is what yellow ochre looks like. To me, anyway, that's what it looks like. Okay. So we're getting this. Uh, let's see. Now we need to make a burnt sienna. You thought we were done with the yellow ochre. We're not. So burnt sienna is brown. I'm going to use my burnt umber with a little tiny bit of red in it. So we've learned our lesson from the last time. It's okay to make mistakes, y'all, but it's really important to learn from them. Remember that. Don't do the same thing next time. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit, because we can always add more, right? If it's, if it's not the color we want, we can add more. Auburn, yes, it is like an auburn. Technically, that would be the color of my hair I guess. Auburn. I call it cherry cola. <laughs> C-O-L-A cola. Nope. I won't subject you guys to my, my singing. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that's such a pretty color. Okay. That's a pretty good burnt sienna. So see, we learned from the pea soup, we learned. Okay, so it wasn't a total waste. Uh, let's see, what other colors do we need? Alizarin crimson and cadmium red. So I don't know how much of this alizarin crimson we need. Let's just see what we get, because what we're looking for is like a muddy red brown color. This is going to be the base of her face. So I think these two colors together actually would make a really excellent muddy red brown color. So we're gonna, we're not gonna follow the directions. We're gonna do our own thing. So I'm going to mix this in this well here. I just picked up a good chunk of that color and I'm gonna try to mix equal parts. I'm wiping that off so I don't uh, contaminate my color, my sienna. Oops, there was a little red there on the outside. So I'm going to pick up some of this, about equal parts, and I'm going to mix the two together. That's a pretty good muddy, muddy brown color. I mean, it looks very reddish, reddish brown to me. All right, I'm going with it. This is going to be the uh, underpainting, like the base for her face. The base for her face. That rhymes. All right, this paper towel is very worn. All right, so now we are going to use our, still our filbert. And this should be pretty dry by now because we've spent a long time mixing colors. Um, so I'm gonna get a little bit of water on my brush and just pick up right at the edge. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of mixing the water with the paint right at the edge of that well there. Okay, so now this is a placement thing. So we want to place kind of the, the triangular shape of her face. Let's see, how are we gonna do this? Where are we gonna do this? All right, let's do, kind of right in the middle. Maybe a little lower, like, like, so this is the middle here. So we're coming down from the middle. I'm 
looking at, I really want her chin to come down farther. Let's see. What we can do is we can take this I'm sort of measuring if you I want to keep you guys in the loop on what I'm doing here because again remember this lesson plan is new to me too so um, I'm looking at the reference photo and her chin is probably about three inches up So I'm just going to paint like a little kind of circular, not circular, rounded area rather, right there. That's going to be her chin. Then it comes up and then her face goes out a little bit. And then it comes back in. Okay. So I'm just filling this in here. Then over here, it's going to just swipe up and back. Probably, what would I? What is that? About a forty-five degree angle. Let's make it thirty. Because everybody knows exactly what a thirty-degree angle looks like. Isn't that? the corners of equilateral triangles. Isn't that 30 degrees? Okay. To find common angles. Okay, that's good. Okay, you said what you're doing is to find common angles. So Do you mean like look at an angle that's similar to something else in the picture? Maybe. I'm just trying to get what you're talking about, the common angles. So she's going to have a little bit of a um, brow here, and then it's just going to slope downward. Like an arm. Oh, okay, I see. Um, so it's, you extend and line up something else. Well, I'm trying to think what I might have that can do that. I mean, I understand what you're talking about. I don't have anything like that. Um, like I said, I, I think in terms of triangles. Different kinds of triangles. Okay. Now I'm starting to dry brush a little bit, so I'm going to pick up just a little bit of water and bring it in. Now my water is dark, but it's okay because it's just slightly tinted, so it's not going to really affect the paint color too much. We're just getting this filled in. So this is the shape of her face. Because she has that kind of headdress on, whatever that is. Turban is what it looks like to me. Okay. We don't have to finish off this side too much. <laughs> if it works, thank you. <laughs> I'm looking. I cleaned off my brush, but I'm looking to see if there's anywhere that I can make her face, like if I need to make her face a little wider. I think it's okay. All right. 
Now, um, we're going to, I actually didn't need to wash my brush apparently. We're gonna come in, we're going to bring down, let's see. So this is, it has like, she's got a curve to her face, so we're just further defining the chin. And then we're going to bring down her neck. And this will be a triangle. It is a right triangle. Look at that. Now I'm starting to get to a place where I'm probably going to want to switch over to my uh, round brush, but we'll just do a couple more lines. Right now we're just kind of sketching out where we want things to go. So this is what I end up doing a lot of times, especially with oil paints, because it takes so long to dry. I find a color that's like a really good base color, and then uh, I sketch out everything and then just paint over this. So this is, we're not going to even see this color. Um, let's see, is Vermeer my favorite master artist? No. Um, let's see. That's a tough one though, because I, I like different artists for different reasons. I would say I really like Frederick Layton, um, mostly because he does fabric. Uh, so I'm a fiber artist and even though I'm a painter, um, I'm still obsessed with painting fabric. I paint fabric a lot. <laughs> so um, not actually applying paint to fabric, but painting pictures of fabric. Um, and Fred Frederick Layton was at L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N. Um, he was a master at, at painting um, fabric. Like if you look at like his Pavonia is or, or Flaming June is another um, famous painting by him. Um, just like you can touch, you can almost touch the fabric. Like you can feel it just looking at it. It's really pretty phenomenal. So that I like him a lot. Um, I like Vermeer in that he was very good at what he did. Um, like I said, he only did like seven paintings. He, he didn't, he wasn't very productive. Okay. I'm going to actually switch over to my, I, I unfortunately talked too long and let my, <laughs> let my brush dry. So I'm going to switch over to my round brush. I'm going to take that as the universe telling me to switch. Thanks universe. Okay. Do you have a favorite master artist? So remember when you're, you're getting your, um, brush wet again, you do the same thing. You just press it against the bottom of the cup. Okay, so we're gonna pick up some color. Now we're gonna do her collar. So her collar goes along the back and then it's gonna angle down in the front, all the way down like that. And then she, there's another little section where the collar ends and the shirt begins. And this is just another angle. Lots of angles in this one. Okay, so this one I'm just filling in a little bit in the front. We don't really need to fill the whole thing in because it's going to be shadow back here. So let's, we're going to mix a little bit of white in with this color that we just made. So I'm going to pull a little bit of this over. Well, actually I can pull a decent amount of it because we're not going to be really using that color anymore. 
and I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. For some reason today it is like massively hot in my house. This is what happens when you live in Florida. Okay, so it's like, I don't know, I think it's like almost 80 degrees or something outside. Oh, Muka. Oh my goodness. I love Muka so much. Like his women are just phenomenal. Um, I think actually Muka and, uh, no, I'm thinking of somebody else. Never mind. Cause I was thinking, I thought Muka might be in the same fam, not family, but time as, um, Frederick Layton, but I don't think so. Cause Frederick Layton was the, um, oh, what were those guys called? The, um, they were the ones, um, they returned to Greek mythology. Like they, they, they did all the Ophelias, all of the Ophelias. It was these guys, uh, um, Luis Ricardo Falero. I don't know that one. I'll have to look that up. Cool. I'll have to look that up. Um, okay. I'm adding the white. And now what we're doing is we're making her skin tone. So it's a little bit more of a pinky color. This is pretty brown to me, but I think it'll be okay because I think we're gonna do some layers. So this is the one thing that's very different usually from acrylic to oil. Oil has layer upon layer upon layer. It's so many layers. Um, actually, one of the most famous oil painters that known for his very realistic faces was Rembrandt. And Rembrandt, um, he didn't actually even do all of his work. He had students that worked with him and they would do a lot of like th this part and then he'd come and do the stuff on top. Uh, so that's what the benefit of having apprentices, you know, is you can make them do the grunt work basically. But he would thin his colors out with linseed oil and apply it so that you could still see the layers underneath. And it was so thin that um, it ended up creating all this complexity that we actually have in our face. You know, the human humans aren't just one color. You know, we've got all these different colors in our skin. So um, it was, Rembrandt was very good at capturing that because he did such thin layers, but so many of them. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this lighter color that we made. I just, all I did was mix a little bit of white And we're going to start coming in and uh, layering in the areas of her face. Most of them are going to be this color and then we'll do a little bit lighter on top because she's, she's very pale. But now we're actually doing shapes like her nose and things like that. Witches going to their Sabbath. I think I know that one. I was always not so great at art history. And I took, I ended up taking art history with a professor uh, who was amazing. He was really good at telling stories. And so it got me very interested in art history. And so I, I learned a lot from that but I'm still pretty bad at like naming artists or paintings or, you know, like specific, I would recognize something if you showed it to me, but as far as like naming them, I just kind of had to, the, the few that I can remember. So her nose kind of comes out a little bit. Waterhouse, Waterhouse was the one I was thinking of. He's at the same time as Frederick Layton. 
whatever those guys were called. Um, Pre-Raphaelite? Pre-Raphaelite? Is that what it's called? Basically, their whole thing was going back to classical Greek paintings. They did a lot of mythology, Greek mythology, and um, their whole thing, like I said, they did all the Ophelias. There were like a ton of, you know, Ophelia doing this, Ophelia doing that, Ophelia in the garden. Lots of Ophelias. Uh, but Waterhouse is another one that's pretty amazing. Actually, I'm looking at uh, getting a jigsaw puzzle of him. Oh, but you know who I did? Because I like getting jigsaw puzzles of art and then doing it. Mooka does a really amazing one of his seasons. Pre-Raphaelite. Raphael, Raphaelite. Oh, my goodness. I cannot pronounce today. Um, Hieronymus Bosch. So before his time. Not even funny. He is by far the coolest artist probably ever. Just because he was just like really ahead of his time and his stuff was just very provocative. I love it. Um, okay, but Hieronymus Bosch, I definitely recommend checking out his stuff. Okay. Haha, <laughs> yes, named after. Bosch was actually named after him, I think. So that's also a good show though. I like that one. Okay. All right, so I'm, what I'm doing right here is I'm, I'm debating how much I want to come down. Let's see. So I'm looking at the shape in the reference photo to determine how far I want to come because I need her. There needs to be a certain amount of space between where the turban starts and her eyebrow starts. So what I usually do is I, I just look at it and kind of guesstimate. So it looks like it's about an inch and a half maybe. Um, so I'm gonna... We're 100% on this journey together. I'm getting a little bit of water on my brush but I'm not necessarily getting paint just because it's dry brushing a lot. So I'm just trying to move some around. Let's see, inch and a half puts it right about here, maybe. <laughs> yes, um, so much to discover in them. But that, to me, that's what's fun. So I've got a, a jigsaw puzzle right now, like a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle of his famous uh, Garden of Earthly Delights. And... Uh, it is quite interesting because think, think about a jigsaw puzzle. You're looking at these tiny little pieces of the painting. So I'm having to look at each individual part. And um, yeah, it's very provocative. We'll just say that. And, and definitely ahead of his time. Kind of eyes wide shut, you know? So, uh, but I like it. You know, I, I like his weirdness. Okay, so now I want to do like her general eye shape. Now we just looked at eyes on Tuesday. So remember, the eye is a sphere, not almond shaped, it's a sphere inside your head. Um, okay, so I'm going to do her eyelid shape. Where's Waldo before it's time? Yes, so true. <laughs> what I really like about Bosch, because he was, gosh, what was he, 1300s or something? He was a long time ago. But he, um, there were people of all different skin colors in his painting, and they were doing all different things. It wasn't like, other paintings of his day where you might have someone who had darker skin was doing some something in servitude uh, to someone with lighter skin. That wasn't what happened in his. If you look, everybody's naked, first of all, which is fantastic. And 
Um, there, there aren't a lot of them, but there are people that have dark skin color and they're just like communing and hanging out with everybody. It's not a thing. And I really like that. I like his, that he was, um, that to me, that feels like it's kind of forward for his time frame, you know? Uh, anyway, just, just an interesting little tidbit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. Why we all started wearing clothes. It's annoying. Uh, but to be honest, I really like fashion, so I can't complain too much because it gives me a chance to dress up. That's why I love Halloween so much. Okay. So this, I need to come down just a little bit farther over. And then we're going to do this across. Let's see. Um. I'm not explaining this all that well, so I'm going to have to get better at this. Her, hmm, her peripheral slant, like, I don't know if you guys remember the other day, I was talking about the peripheral slant, like, which is where one corner of the eye goes to the other corner and like the, the degree at which it slants is your peripheral slant. So, um, hers it's hard to tell because she's got her head cocked just slightly. But it looks like hers goes down like mine does, where it starts up in the corner, in the it, like closest to the nose, and then goes down just slightly rather than going up. So, oh, in the realm of art. Well, yeah, because all of the models would have been nude. I mean, you know. It just depended on what they were painting, I suppose. Because if you look at all the old Dutch paintings of, like, where they did all the parables, you know, they do all the parables, like, in one, you'd have one painting. It, that was a real Where's Waldo. And there were, like, a hundred stories in that painting if you just looked at each one. And a lot of times they were phrases and things like that, like, um, a bird in the hands worth two in the bush type stuff, you know, but Dutch. <laughs> um Okay. I don't know how happy I am with this eye over here. I feel like it's maybe a little bit too high up, but we might be able to fix that later. Let's just go ahead and get this underpainting done because we still have more colors to go. I want to get this show on the road. Okay. But yeah, they were always clothed in those. I feel like, and I may be wrong on this, but I feel like there was some like Christian, because that was like kind of around the time of like Martin Luther and stuff. So I feel like there was maybe some um, Christian influence there. And so they would have been clothed. All right, so I'm, I'm bringing in, now I'm not going to shade all of this in with my lighter color. I'm gonna leave some of it dark. But I am going to, the bottom of her cheek, she has some reflected light down here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that in. I tell you what, you guys are fantastic and I really appreciate you being on here. I am still getting used to having more than one person on my stream <laughs> because up until now, I really haven't had that many people. So for me, I, I get distracted very easily. I don't know how, you know, you get these big streamers. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for joining my stream. Um, you get these big streamers though that have like, you know, even 200 people, but like a thousand people or more. And they're all talking. Like, even if you go look at Bob Ross's stream, like, of course he's not live. He's not alive even. Um, so, you know, it's just somebody streaming the videos, but you know, they're all talking and like, I don't know how, I don't know how some, some people, um, concentrate. I know 
Uh, some people like have rules. Like I know um, Casey, I like to follow um, Handmade Hero, and he has like kind of a rule. Like once the stream starts, he doesn't look at chat. But I mean, I don't want to do that because the, the whole point is this is a class, and I want questions to be asked. You know, I just have to like get better at it. So forgive me if I get distracted by chat and I stop painting. Please just forgive me. Um, because I'm just getting used to different, different, uh, types of distraction. Okay. Things like before the Reformation were often naked in art. I think John Calvin talked about that in his Institutes of the Christian Religion. That would make sense because, um, you know, that was one of the things with the Catholic Church that the Reformation had a problem with. You know, it's like, you're saying this is okay, but then this is over here isn't okay. You know, so it would make sense that it came from that. I really wish I remembered that particular period of time. I just don't. I, I Like I said, I'm not so great at art history. Um, okay, so I'm making like her cheek area. All right. This is really a lot like an oil painting, though. And this is probably the most oil painting-like. Uh, we love hearing Casey talk to himself. Yes, it's awesome. I like Casey a lot. You know, I'm in his Discord group, and um, he actually responds very positively to all of his followers, and uh, he's a pretty cool dude. Okay. Um, so... I'm going to get her, uh, this area, whatever that is, the, the top of the, the upper lip, I suppose. Um, really hope my placement for everything is correct here. So her, I have not shown you guys lips yet. Um, that is going to be a future stream. I'm going to have to write that lesson plan myself, So, um, but I, I want to show you guys how to do lips. It's not actually that hard, but it's something that until you know how to do it, it's difficult, um, difficult to get to look right, especially when people are smiling and you can see teeth. So I'll be doing that in a future drawing stream. But anyway, hers are kind of going down and her lips are slightly open. Uh, not sure I've placed this in the right place, um, but that's okay. The good thing about acrylic is, you know, you can paint over. It's not like watercolor. So I'm just trying to leave an area where, like between her nose. Man, looking at paintings, let me tell you, looking at paintings, when, oh, sorry, you said art is just a hobby for me. Okay. Um, well, it's pretty much a hobby for me, too. I mean, at this point, I do some graphic design, but other than that, I mean, I don't really do it professionally anymore. It's just something fun to do. Um... What I'm doing right here is I'm just kind of casually glancing my brush off of the canvas so it's not putting in very much paint down, but I just need to get this spot here so that I know I'm getting my proportions correct. So there's hardly any paint on my brush. Let's see, this is not, something is off here and I haven't decided what it is yet. I feel like it's maybe my eyes are too far this way. Okay. Well, let's see. Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll find out. Okay. I'm rinsing my brush. 
usually when it starts to dry brush like that, I just rinse it and give it like a good beginning start. Okay. What I was going to say is when you're in the in-between stages, it never looks good. Like, well, I won't say never, but it rarely looks good. Right now, it looks terrible, right? I mean, it doesn't look at all like the girl in the picture. And this is just kind of, you, as an artist, you have to be okay with the in-between stages. You have to be okay with it not looking good, especially with oil paintings because there's so many layers. So it just takes time um, to get used to that. I'm still not completely used to it. I do think maybe I put my eye over a little too far. So let's see, I'm gonna measure here. There's a, about one eye. I, I talked about this in my anime class. The, sh the width of your eye, in between your eyes is one eye. It's like the width of one eye. So, but the problem is, is because she's turned, that's really hard to see. Let's see, this one is shorter. And this one maybe starts a little further over. Okay. Okay. That's probably pretty good. Let's move on. All right. So now we're going to add even more white to our mixture. Because remember, like I said, our girl is very pale. All right, so another pea size amount. My water cooler is talking to me. I've got a, a water cooler because I like to drink reverse osmosis water and uh, occasionally in the middle of the night it will talk to me, which is always startling. <laughs> Just hear this bloop. Okay. So we're going lighter. All right, so I don't know how many people are actually following along with this. It's great if you are. If you're just watching for fun, that's super cool too. Um, but if you are following along, I want to try to keep it moving for you guys. Um, let's see. All right, so now I'm going to do this area here. This is definitely a highlight here. So I'm looking for the highlights on her face. So that's a highlight there. She's got a highlight on her nose. You're just chilling? That's cool. So that actually helps because then I don't feel the pressure to like keep moving. I mean, I want to keep moving, but just it's not the... It's not the same kind of pressure. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna come up a little bit farther. To her brow line. Because we're, we're leaving some area there for the actual brows because you've got shadow underneath. We talked about that on Tuesday in my eye stream. So now I'm coming over on this other side and she's got a little bit because there's going to be a little bit of shadow from her headdress or turban whatever it is so we're going to come down just a little bit below the, the line we're not going to we're not going to fill all that in ah you do master studies that's pretty cool so I've only done 
one master study and that was well that's not true I did a master study of Frederick Layton a long time ago but it didn't really turn out as that great and what ended up happening is it turned into a master study of Pablo Picasso of his blue period and it's a self-portrait and it turned out awesome it's really creepy though so you know, I don't want like this giant picture of myself because I did it really big so I gave it to my mom <laughs> because that's that's uh yeah okay it's weird to have self-portraits hanging up around the place I don't know it's weird to me and I really like myself so I don't know I don't know how some artists do it maybe they don't maybe they give them away too I don't know all right so I'm going around the outside of her cheek here her nose comes down farther maybe I didn't bring it down all the way all right so she's got right above her lip she's got some light because the light is coming from this direction Yeah. I'm like rethinking all these parts in her face and I need to just calm the F down, you know? Like just let it happen. This is what happens every time I start getting really nervous about where placement of things and stuff and it'll work out. You know, I probably do have things in the wrong place. It happens. Okay. I mean, if anything, this will just be a really good lesson on how to correct your placement of things. <laughs> Everything's a lesson. It's the great thing about being a teacher. I can be like, I meant to do that. It's a lesson. Yeah, my, my lips are way too high. They need to be right there. Right there is where they should come down to. It's possible that her chin is too low. I mean, it's possible that I just have her face proportions completely off anyway. But I don't think so. I think because her nose, I want to say, comes a little bit more straight down. I'm trying to give her a big, big schnoz like me. And that's just not going to work. Okay. Um, maybe here I'm just going to fill this in over here we're just going to fill this in this is what's happening right now okay I'm feeling better about this situation here because I really want her mouth to be in the right place you know it's kind of important <laughs> All right, so this is too dry for me to fix, but I do still have a little bit of this color. Nope, that was not that color. This, all right, if you put something down and it's still wet, you can pick it up. I really don't even need to do this because it's darker, but I'm just showing you guys because, you know, it's a lesson but with acrylic paint if if it's not dry yet you can pick it up okay this was the darker color nope that's the burnt sienna what in the world oh I mixed it oh bummer okay I mixed it well I'm gonna have to use this okay well there we go I forgot that I mixed the white directly into that color because I said, we're not going to use this again. 
yeah, that's what happens. You know, that's what happens. All right, so that's okay. We'll just use this color and it's just gonna be, I mean, her lips are red in the picture anyway. I don't know what I'm stressing out about. They're not even this color. We're just getting shadow there. Eh. All right. I am considerably happier with this shape here. Her mouth is open, so it's okay that it's the width that it is. Yeah. All right. As far as her nose, um, noses don't start this far up. So we're going to get a little bit of this color. I'm going to bring this down. Well, uh, hold on. Hold on. Because she does have shadow under her nose. Hang on. Let's see. Uh, here. So I just, I just ended it a little bit too soon. Not, not too bad. Okay. What I'm doing right now is just correcting. I'm correcting areas that I'm pretty sure were incorrect. It's a great thing about acrylic, unlike watercolor where you gotta plan everything ahead of time. You do not do have to do that as much with acrylic. Okay, so this swoops up to here. Okay, yeah. I probably could have just planned this ahead of time, you know, when I was doing the, the underpainting bit, this, this color here. But I didn't, so, you know, it is what it is. Okay. Um, yeah. Actually, I think that's all right. Um, I'm going to come in. Here. And on this side, so what I'm doing just to narrate this a little bit is I was looking and I noticed some places that were off in proportion. And so now I'm coming in and fixing those proportions. I was pretty close with the top of the head though. That's pretty, that was pretty close. Actually, I think this was my color. Well, how about that? Okay. Well, you know. Okay. Moving along. Now that we have the proportions of the face down, I'm happy with that. Let's, let's continue. All right. We do have over here a faint little ear that I do want with this color. Let me get a little bit of water on my brush. This is, let's see, if the turban comes down to here, the ear is about right here. That seems very bright, I know. We're gonna tone that down later. We just, I just want to get that shape in there. Okay. Uh, let's get a little bit of this color on her neck here. Just a little triangle of it. You 
Yeah, it's not really a turban. I don't know what it is. It's some kind of headdress. So the question was, what kind of garb is she wearing? It's not your typical turban. And I don't know. I don't know what it is in the picture. Um, some art historian who knows their stuff probably would be able to tell you. I'm like the most terrible. I can tell you some things about some art. <laughs> That's pretty much as good as it gets for me. Okay. I'm moving my mouse all around. Uh, let's see. I'm looking to see if there's any places. She does have a little place right here where there's a little bit of reflected light. It goes right up to her mouth, like the curve of her mouth. And then kind of angles up. And then she has reflected light right here. So it's just under her chin. She's got some reflected light down there. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to paint her collar. We're gonna do pure titanium white. Now, my water is very icky. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually use my matte medium. So I really just don't want to go get more water right now. So I'm mixing my matte medium and what this is going to do is it's going to make my uh, paint a little more liquidy. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. We can go over that line, the line we created earlier. There's a little bit of, it's not a straight line. She's got like a little bit of like ruffle to her collar where slopes down a little bit so see what I'm I'm not creating a straight line I'm giving it a little bit of a a fun wave if you will okay I really should be leaving a shadow area so this is dark. So that I don't have to go back and create shadow there. It, it will create it itself. Okay. Now she does have shadow back here. So what I'm going to do I'm going up. Let's see. I'm going to start from this side. I always debate what side I'm going to start from, but I I really want to cover this side. Okay, and then I'll meet that angle there. And then we'll just fill it in. Now we can use the filbert for this. 
I'm just going to continue using my round brush because it's already got the white on it. Okay. I am anticipating that this stream is going to be longer just because I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I know what I'm doing in terms of art. I don't, you know, this is a new lesson plan for me and I've never even looked at it before. So, um, those streams usually take a little bit longer, but it's okay because we are doing a master painting. It's not, you know, this isn't just, you know, painting a, an orca. That was pretty fun though. Even though in my orca stream, one of my viewers who I happen to be friends with IRL, um, pointed out that the snout on my orca is incorrect. I was using the reference photo, but I probably should have been using a better reference photo because um, orcas do not have the kind of snout that I painted and that I had you guys paint. Um, so I will be correcting that and I will be posting a correction in my Discord. Um, for those of you who are new to my stream, I highly encourage you to join my Discord, even if you don't want to look at the reference photo, although you're probably going to want to uh, for this one. It, it always helps to have a reference photo. But I encourage you to join my Discord because you can upload your completed, um, you know, take a picture with your phone and upload it, and we can actually do a, a critique. And in fact, um, I usually do a live critique on stream. Uh, which we will look at today if anybody followed. I don't know if anyone is following, but okay, we've got the um, the white is done. So we're gonna let that dry. So now we're gonna actually start to do the uh, hair wrap. Okay, so I've got my phthalo blue. And I'm just gonna put pure phthalo blue there. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of white and I'm gonna just dip it in my blue. Now that does dirty the blue a little bit, but that's okay. And we are going to do like a zigzag going up. So let's see, starting right above where we ended here. We're just doing a zigzag. It's not a totally uniform zigzag. That. that just gives us our the basis of where uh, the shadow is going to be. Okay. Let's see. So what we're going to do is take some of our blue. I'm just going to mix it in the middle here. I'm starting to run out of spaces, spaces to mix. Because I mixed that pea, pea soup earlier. And I'm going to bring in some of my white. And we're going to make a light blue. Now, this blue is very blue to me. Um, they are suggesting I use ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is a much cooler blue. So what I'm gonna do is mix a little bit of red in with this. That gives you ultramarine blue because ultramarine is a cool blue and cool blues mean it's a little more purple. I'm gonna take just a little bit of red That may be too much red. I'm going to wipe some of that off. There we go. Cool blue. That's right. Not a warm blue, a cool blue. Cool blue is the...
much more interesting and aloof cousin of warm blue. Actually, I wouldn't probably say much more interesting. The cool kids, well, sometimes they're more interesting. All right, I did end up using all of the red. What do you know? This is making it kind of a purplish color, but that's okay. That's like the color that it's in her. Mixing in palettes is annoying. I'm going to tell you, I really like palette paper. I started doing palettes because it's less messy on a desk surface here where you know I'm uh, showing you guys where I want you guys to be able to see everything because palette paper is like having a whole other canvas but I do prefer it better and when I was doing um, let's see this is okay this really Maybe I just need a little bit more blue. Maybe it's just like a little. Um, but anyway, when I was doing oil painting, I used glass or not really glass. I used, I mean, sometimes I did, but you, I used like a piece of acrylic that I just carry around with me. Like a piece of plexiglass, basically, basically. I'm not totally happy with this blue here, but if I make it any cooler, I don't think it's going to be the right color. I don't know. Let's just see. Let's just see what we get. Maybe it'll be a little bit different. It's okay. You know, we're not Vermeer. Um, for this, we could probably use our filbert. So I'm going to get it wet again. It's pretty dry, so I've got to press it against the bottom like I did, like we did at the very beginning. Wipe, wipe it off, and then pick up a little bit of our blue. Okay. So her, I'm just going to call it a turban for the sake of argument. But her turban starts over here where it's not quite touching her head and then comes down a little bit on the side and then wraps around. Okay. This definitely is not the correct blue. Ultramarine is really its own color. And I will say that I have done entire paintings in just burnt sienna, ultramarine, and white, titanium white. And they're, they turn out pretty good. Like, you can get a lot of colors from just those three. So it's going a little bit at, at an angle. Okay. So yeah, I'm definitely not thrilled with this particular shade of blue, but you know, we'll see if we can fix it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna come into the area that I, uh, I'm just gonna corner my brush into this area. But I want to make it look like a natural brush stroke because Vermeer's looks like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually pick up, and I, I'm not sure I want to do it with a dirty brush, but I'm going to do it anyway. Picking up a little bit of white and working it in directly, I'm mixing directly on the canvas. only this were a different color blue. 
So, but the white I'm not pulling all the way to the back. I'm just gonna kind of mix in the front because this is where this is where her uh, the light would be hitting it from you know this angle here. Okay. So her turban does connect right here, but it's with the blue. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blue and just connect it there. Uh, don't, don't wipe it off yet. You can just mix that right in. So what I did is I wedged a little bit of the darker color in there. And now it's going to look connected, but like a fold, fold of material. Uh, I'm going to do a similar something over here. I'm going to bring in a little bit of the darker color there and just start blending in the white above it. Okay. Uh, it does carry all the way down. To right above that little ear that we did. Now, that is very dark. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my black color from earlier. Which it's getting. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to feather the edge of this. And actually, you know what? Why not? I'm going to bring a little bit in here. Into that dark got more blue on that than I really intended. Okay. Picking up some more of my dark. I didn't mean to have so much blue there. So I'm just bringing it in. I'm just drawing my brush in a little bit. up a little dark again. I'm going to come up here and just draw my brush in just a little bit. Oh, well, hold on. That was a little, that's a little more watery. That was not what I wanted to happen. We'll have to fix that. Okay. Clean my brush. I'm coming in from the blue side and I'm going to blend this because that was a lot more watery than I wanted. So to blend, if you've not been in one of my painting classes before, you dry off your brush since it's still, the blue is still wet and we're just going to feather right at the edge of where I brought in that black. And what this does is it blends my two colors together. So I'm just feathering the brush. It's completely clean and dry when I'm doing this. That is important. Because if you start getting too much, like I'm already starting to get too much blue, you clean it again and come in and feather the edge again. Depending on how much color you have on there, this, you might have to do this a bunch of times. Almost, almost. All 
All right. That's pretty good. Okay. I think we're pretty much done with the turban. And look at this paper towel. That's pretty much done. I'm going through a lot of paper towels. I'll get a new one. All right, so we're going to move back to our round brush. And we are going to work with our white in the eyes. We're going to we're going to lay in her eyes. Actually, you know what? Not really. Hmm. I'm not really happy with the the amount of her face is very pink I guess is what I'm trying to get at okay so I want it to be even more white maybe maybe I just need to add a little bit more yellow I'm gonna add this directly to this um, kind of skin tone that we had earlier. I think she's got more yellow in her skin. And I'm going to lighten it up a little bit too. All of this is looking at the reference photo and deciding, deciding, deciding. Okay, I'm going to bring in a little bit more white. If you have like the yellow ochre that we did at the beginning, you know, you can just use that directly out of the tube. I need a little bit more white. Okay. I feel like I need something interesting to talk about with you guys. I'm not really, uh, I'm not being chatty tonight like I normally am. Normally I've got some major philosophy of life I feel like I need to share with everybody. I mean, maybe I'm saving you guys. I'm sparing you from having to listen to my philosophies of life. But not a lot's really happened to me today. Like, usually it goes based on whatever happened, um, you know. Okay, so we're, sorry, that glare is pretty bright, but we're using this color here. Ooh, that was fun. It's very dark. I'm going to probably have to change my water. Um, I'm going to come in here. Yeah, I'm liking this a lot better. I'm doing the highlights on her face with this, I yellowed, I yellowed it down a little bit. The original has almost no eyebrows. Yeah, she really doesn't. Um, like I'm looking at the even the image and like it looks almost like her eyebrows are like shaved off or something. I know someone who just randomly shaved off his eyebrow. Uh, well, it wasn't really random. He did it on a, a kind of a bet. He won the bet. So, you know, but he only shaved off one of his eyebrows. So that's interesting. I don't think his mother didn't really find it very interesting. Okay. 
I am going to take the briefest of uh, breaks, but just to get new water. So hang tight. Just a minute, guys. You guys are now going to enjoy the lovely ambient sounds of what I like to call the Marble Chapel. Some of you may recognize this. back okay so hopefully you enjoyed that that particular ambient music I actually meditate to almost every night I love it it is from my um, favorite video game in the whole world called the witness so I hope you enjoyed it so I've got clean water now and I've got to read the chat that said that apparently Vermeer had a no eyebrow thing so that's really interesting and I wonder if maybe it was the models he used or that was just what he chose to do, I suppose. I don't know. Um, but that's very interesting. Okay. So I really just needed to get some water to like water this paint down. Thank you for bearing with me. I hope everybody got a little meditation done while I was gone. If you have not had an opportunity to play that game, The Witness, I highly suggest that you do, especially if you happen to like puzzles. It's a very, um, I do like puzzles. It is a, um, quite a challenging game, but it's never in the same way for the same person. You know, every person experiences the witness differently. And I really like it for that. Okay, so I messed up a little bit. I accidentally painted over an area I didn't mean to of her no eyebrows. So all I'm doing is coming in with the a clean brush and just trying to scoop up some of that. I think we're good. I think that's good. All right. So this time I'm taking the opportunity to correctly uh, put the highlight on her nose because I had it just a little bit too far over before. So now I'm doing that. Her nose does like flip out just a little bit. So I don't think I was totally off there. All right. And like the side of her face like almost blends with her nose in the painting. I don't have the original up in front of me, but I wonder if it does that in the original.
just taking this time to go slow and correct this. Um, I have a couple guidelines that I always say, like I used to call them rules, but I've re recently started not liking the word rule, um, at least when it comes to art. So um, they're guidelines, but my number two artist guideline is to not rush. Don't rush, just take your time. Like it's important to get it right. So these rules started because I had students that had like ADHD, for example, and they would rush through everything. And so I had to come up with a couple of guidelines that I could just remind them. I would say, come on, number two rule. Come on, guys, you know, don't rush. <laughs> it worked. Okay. Bring this down here for her chin. This like little spot over here that I like, like on her cheek. This here, this area here. Quite frankly, the, this whole area I feel like should be, like we should already have like good shadows and stuff in here by now. So I'm just taking my brush. There's not a whole lot of paint still left on it. And just coming in and kind of filling in some of this area here where it is lighter, but not quite as light. Like she's got this kind of rouge on her cheek. And I'm just sketching this in. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, but that's okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and do the white of the eyes. So, taking my round brush, I'm getting the white, and it's going to go down into the corner of the eye. arch up but we are going to leave the area where her iris is we're gonna leave that uh, dark so we're gonna come around like this and like I'm gonna I'm gonna curve this here Now I'm looking at the shape in the reference photo, the shape of the white, to make sure that my white is long enough and that it curves under enough. Okay, now I did have, uh, I forgot that I put new white down. Cause I was like, what happened? I had the, um, matte medium in it, but I forgot that I put new white down so it doesn't have matte medium in it. So it's not going on very smoothly. So get a little bit of water. It's kind of the whole point of me going and getting water, right? I'm just being very careful because this is going to go and in fact I think I even went over a little bit, but it's okay because it's going to be darker. Let me just see if I can catch a little bit of this. Clean off my brush. All right. So 
I've got one side down. We're gonna, I'm gonna wet my brush, get a little bit of white, and I'm gonna do the other side. other side is considerably smaller. And her eye goes all the way out like up against the black. Now I think I did my black just a little bit too far um, like I covered it up too much earlier, so I'm going out to about where I think it should end. And I'm making this little crescent moon shape. Now because I'm using a size 6 brush, if you have a smaller brush, if you have like a size 2, for example, um, you could use a size two brush and, and you can get even smaller, like even more exact. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a clean brush that's a little tiny bit wet and just coming in here and just scooping up and that gives me a little bit more of an exact. Now of course I'm going to be coming in here with dark so I can cover that up, but this is just going to help me be more precise when I put lay my dark in. I feel like this may become, hold on. Even farther down. Here we go. Just a little bit makes a difference. All right. I keep looking over at my um, other monitor because my other monitor, so one monitor has my reference photo and lesson plan on it and the other monitor has you guys, my chat and my uh, but also this whole area right here so I can see what you guys are looking at and I just am making sure it's sometimes it's nice to look at a different angle you know and and I encourage my students to get up walk away from your painting and then come back to it because um, you'll get a different perspective okay um, I'm just touching up I'm getting a little bit of this light color I'm touching up right here right above her eye There's a couple of things going on. One, she has like this brow ridge here that has like no eyebrow on it. And then I'm gonna actually come in and lay in her eyelids with this color. So, it comes down, it's going to curve around her eye, I'm leaving a little bit of a space because we're going to be putting some dark in there, curves around her eye, and then kind of angles up. That's that fatty part of the lid we were talking about. So it gives your eye its shape or what looks like its shape because all eyes are spherical. And that's important to remember when you're drawing eyes. They are spherical. They are spheres inside your head. She's looking kind of sad right now. I mean, I guess she looks a little sad in the picture, but 
not as sad as my girl. My girl's looking like really sad. I think what I'm going to have to do, I think that there's like a, an eye shape issue going on here where like I've got it, her upper lid is drooping just a little bit too much. Okay. So let's, we're going to do this side. So this side just comes in over the eye and there's two little sections. Yours looks sad too? Okay. Well, that makes me feel better. So maybe, maybe we just have a, a pair of sad girls. They're sad because they have no eyebrows. They're like, what happened to my eyebrows? Okay. All right. Let's move on. So now I'm going to take this dark color, get a little bit of water in there. Eyebrows gone. Mwah. Shave that right off. Okay. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint dark right in her eyes, like her, her, um, irises. Now she's going to look like a demon. So she'll really be sad about that. I suppose, or maybe not. Demons have no souls. So maybe she won't be sad at all. Maybe she won't care. Okay. I'm fixing, I'm fixing my droopy eye over here at the same time as, as painting this in. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the overall shape and making sure that I, it matches. It's a little better, a little better. Um, also if your white is dry and this is key, you need your white to be dry of the eye. We're going to, oh man, there is a lot of paint on that brush. Hold on and get some of that extra paint off. We're going to come over and ever so carefully paint her, uh, the, the upper lid very, very carefully. This is so important. I'm still fixing a little bit. There we go. All right. Now I need to do this on the other side. All right, so we're gonna come in. Be careful where you put your hand. I have so many times, especially with oil painting that doesn't dry right away, put my hand bloop right down on something and there's paint all along the inside of it. So just be very careful with that. So I'm gonna finish off her demon eyes here. Now on this side, I'm being kind of careful because I feel like maybe her eye was just a little too big on this side. So I'm not filling in the entire area. I'm paying attention still to the shapes. Like you always want to be kind of looking at your overall shape that it's creating, like looking at your reference photo.
Okay. And we're going to do the same thing very carefully. I'm going to get extra paint off. Very carefully. I'm going to come in barely touching the canvas. Now, does she have any on her lower? She kind of does. So, this might actually be harder for me to do, so I'm going to turn mine upside down. Luckily, it's a small enough canvas I can do that. Okay, I am going to try to come in here and get her lower lash line. There's not very much of one. It's just a little bit. But she's got a little bit on both sides. Oop, that was more than I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna try to clean this up. I do a lot of this with oil paintings, but my oil paintings actually turn out pretty realistic looking, so I must do something okay. I actually, my mom, because I'm staying with my mom right now, so uh, I actually have the Picasso painting that I brought with me from my BRB so that I can show you guys. It's not a Picasso painting, but it's a master, like I did something in the style of a master. So, and I did it in the style of his blue period. So you guys will get to see my self-portrait if you don't want to traipse out to my website that has it on there as well. Okay. Now, we need to make a dark green. So, let's see. We've got actually already have some blue we have our pea green. I mean, we could be using that, I suppose. But actually, I'm looking at the color of her eyes. They are, they're like a gray green. We probably could use this, guys. All right, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use a little of my puke green there. So a reminder of how we got this was by adding blue to orange, essentially. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna bring in a little bit of the Payne's Gray that we made earlier and just mix that together. I don't need a lot of it, but I do need my dark gray. Man, when I said I didn't need a lot of it, I needed more than I grabbed. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. So I made like kind of a dark green by adding some of my, my pea soup green and my Payne's Gray that we made earlier. Okay. So we're going to get our small brush Get a little bit of water and get some water get water down a little bit of this green here this dark green that we made otherwise what you could do is if you don't have this pea green this lovely pea green I made earlier you could use your um, phthalo blue with a little bit of yellow okay so I'm getting excess paint off of my brush She's going to have, it's like a little U. So. It's like a little U, like that. 
I'm just going to make it a little thicker. All my colors in this painting are very vibrant. And I feel like Vermeer's were very watered down. Not watered down, muddied, rather. They have very muddy colors. What I might do, I'm just going to test this out. Because why not? I'm mixing, I'm getting, grabbing a little bit of my burnt sienna. And I'm just painting just a tiny bit in there. Cleaning off my brush. And then I'm going to blend those colors together and see what that does. See if that muddies it down enough. If it doesn't, I can always paint over it. Uh, maybe it's a little more muddy than I want it. It's a little more muddy. So I'm going to pick up a little more of my green. This is why you have the benefit of watching me instead of following along what I'm doing. It's always a good thing. But that did actually muddy it down overall. Like when I painted the green on top of it. So it did something. Okay. I'm making sure that I've got a nice round, like the, the inner part. Oh, you are following along. See, I thought you said you were just chilling. Okay, cool. Well, did you do the, did you muddy it down? If so, just add a little bit of the green on top of it. And that blends to a very nice muddy down green. Okay. Thank you so much for following along. <laughs> Sorry I misunderstood earlier. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, you caught up with me. That's pretty impressive. So art may be a hobby for you, but you're clearly pretty good at it. Okay. So I am going to do my green on the other side. Okay, so I'm coming in and I'm doing the same scoop, but on this side, I'm gonna actually go all the way to the top of the eye there, like all the way to the, the very top and scooping around. Okay, like that. Now, I need to do the same thing I did to the other eye, which is to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna. I mean, the mistake I made in this eye worked out, but I need to replicate that mistake. This is always fun, the fun part of art. Okay, so I'm, I'm putting a little bit of burnt sienna on there, and I'm going to blend it with a clean brush. And then I'll put the green on top of it again. This is the fun part of art, is trying to, when you really like a happy accident, then you got to try to duplicate it. Dun, dun, dun. It's always harder trying to duplicate it. Okay. My water cooler is talking to me again. Okay. Pretty good. I feel like she's, whoops. I'm going to take a little bit of this pea green. If you have yellow, you can use yellow. And I'm just going to add just a little touch to the right side and underneath of the eye. If you remember from the eye drawing the other day, you do have areas that are lighter in your iris because of the reflected light, because it's reflecting through your cornea. So it's not much, but it's a little, you know. Okay. All right, so we need to get the white in our eye, and I want this to like dry off first before we do that. Um, and that is, again, that's light that's reflected through the cornea, 
and re- it's it reflects back up in the on the opposite side. So if, if it's going in the bottom, then it will reflect back up at the top and you'll have a little white at the top of your eyes. So we're going to add a little white. Yeah, in my classes, sometimes you not only get an art lesson, you get a science lesson too. And we, we learn, we've learned about flowers, we've learned about eye parts. I'm sure we'll learn about lips when I finally get that lesson plan done. All right, so I got a little bit of white on my brush and I'm coming in right at the top of the green on this side. And it's kind of a round shape. Uh, let's see. On this side, it's a little smaller. I'm gonna actually grab a little bit more white. Well, it was bigger than intended, but I'm going to actually make this side slightly bigger. So there we go. Ta-da! Okay. Now we gotta work in her lips. So this says it's one part alizarin crimson and one part cadmium red. So we've got... Let me see what this red looks like, the naphthol, because so it's like equal. If you have alizarin crimson and you have cadmium red, alizarin crimson just has like a tiny bit of blue in it. Um, I'm going to just put some red in here and see. Okay, so this <coughs> is just a little too red. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of blue. I'm just going to pick some up from my tray here that I had. A little bit of my phthalo blue. I'm just going to mix it in. See if we can just tone down this red a little bit. Yep. That works. Now it's a little darker tone than I really wanted. So I guess there was more blue than I originally intended. But this is one of the colors on her mouth, so it won't go to waste because she's got a couple different colors going on. So what I'm going to do is take some of this, pop it out here. It's probably even too much. And add a little bit more red to it. Now again, I'm using naphthol crimson. I keep saying naphthol red. It's naphthol crimson. And uh, phthalo blue is what I'm using. There we go. That's pretty. That's nice. Okay. My nose always gets itchy and drippy whenever it hasn't been drippy knock on wood <laughs> but it's it always gets itchy whenever I'm streaming okay so the lips so I'm using this lighter red like the mix of the alizarin crimson and and uh, cadmium red if you have it or in my case, I just mixed a little bit of blue with my naphthol. Okay. So I'm just making the shape that I already did earlier.
fill in the top part of that shape. Now remember her mouth is open. So we're going to have the lips here. Ooh. I just went over my line. I'm not happy about that. Hang on. I got to fix this. Still wet. While it's still wet, you could fix. I just basically, I, my brush slipped a little bit. Okay. Whew. That was a close one. Okay. So I'm picking up my red again and continuing to fill this in. Now, lips are thickest in the middle and then they taper out towards the outside without doing a whole lesson in lips. I will give you the little secret of lips, which is that you have five shapes in lips. You've got a circular, a, like a, an oval shape right here in the center. It's almost a ball. Okay. Then you have four carrots, two fat carrots and two thin carrots. So the carrots are shaped where like the, the, you know, you, your carrot is shaped like this, right? So the thin part at the bottom goes down goes to the corners of your mouth. So you've got two thin carrots up here, two thick carrots down here. So right here in the center, if you notice in your lips, you actually have like a little place where it kind of dips in. And that's where those two carrots, the two fat carrots at the bottom actually meet. That's it. Five shapes. One, two, three, four, five, five shapes. Actually, learned more about the shapes of lips in a uh, pottery class. Because in pottery, you've got to shape everything first before you put it on. Okay, so I'm picking up some more red. Took a little break there. To explain lips. Okay, I've got the bottom part. Now the top part, we're looking at it from the side. So we're not going to see all of the carrots. We're just seeing like the top part of one. And then the center section and the, um, the other carrot. I like that idea that we've got carrot shapes in our mouth. Okay. Now the top lip kind of goes past the bottom lip, like it's going to sweep past it a little, just slightly. This is a little more open. I think I need to add a little bit more to the top lip. So you're always checking your shapes and the shape of the open mouth is not in the reference photo is much smaller than the photo than what's happening in my painting. So I am adjusting to make sure that I've got the right size. Okay. 
because you've got shadow and stuff, which sometimes it doesn't throw the overall shape off, but it, it does throw the way it looks to us. You know, like we see, that's why lips are so hard because we see, um, you know, the highlighted part of the lips. We don't really notice the, the shadow parts where it's moving in. And so you've got a lot of things that are moving away from you or moving toward you. Okay. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this dark here that I originally created. And this is going to go at the bottom. Just going to line the bottom of her lip and then kind of come up in the corner. That's that shadow. All right. I'm fixing this because I went over a little bit. This keeps happening. When you're trying to do something very small, this is why if you do have like a size two brush or you have a, a smaller brush, you can go ahead and use it because the size six brush is pretty good at almost everything, but getting tiny, tiny details, sometimes it's not. I don't usually do this much detail either. This is a lot of detail for my, my uh, streams. All right, so I'm gonna blend. So what you do, clean brush, you blend. So my stuff's still wet, so I'm coming in and just feathering the edges. My paint is like really drying. Okay. Now. This is saying to water down some Payne's Gray. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my Payne's Gray, stick it in the middle and water it down. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of brown to it. Watering it down. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit more of my mixed burnt sienna to it earlier. Oops, that's not Payne's Gray anymore. There we go. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to actually paint the inside of her mouth. So this is, so we're painting in the corner there, coming across the bottom. Now this is watered down. Okay. So you can manipulate it a little bit, but it'll get out of hand really fast. And then I'm going to have two areas where I come up now you guys can see that pretty dark, but this is very watered down. So that's going to dry extremely light and you're not going to see the uh, shapes here. Actually, this goes a little bit farther. I think when you're first drawing teeth, it always looks so funny. Oops. Well, looks really funny if I don't have any dark shadow in there. Oh, no. Well, technically you can do the whole thing. It's not going to matter as long as it's dry. So I'm just going to paint over that since I messed up. That's going to dry. I'm going to let that dry. And then let's do, while that's drying, 
uh, we are going to get a little tiny bit of white. I'm just going to water it down a little bit. So I'm just, since I'm running out of, see, I did it. I got drops on there. Um, since I'm running out of places on my palette, what I'm doing is I'm just like, I only need a tiny bit of white. So I just have it there. Um, and we are going to paint a little bit of white directly on her lips. And I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of red, not much. And I'm blending directly on the um, canvas. So now I've got a clean brush. Maybe I actually need a little bit more white. Let me pick up some white. We're making kind of a pink color. Okay, so we've got the pink color that we're making. We're just blending it all around. And I've got it like kind of coming down in different places, like it's going up and then Because our lips, you know, kind of have like a, like a little bit of a jagged thing going on. And then I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of white. And over here in the corner, there's just going to be like a little... reflection. I think I do, did just a tiny bit too much, but it's right there in the corner of her mouth. I added just a little bit too much. And I went up into her upper, upper lip. But it's right at the, in her bottom lip. It's not, it does not go into the upper lip. It like it, it dead ends at the upper lip. very slight. I'm going to hold this up because I don't know if you guys can even see this. See right there. Very, very slight. Okay. We're going to get a little bit more of that watered down white. This should be dry. The pink should be dry. And we're going to do just a couple like little, little areas. Kind of pure white. I'm going to hold this up so you can see. I'm just doing like little dashes, really. Okay. Now, this should be dry in the middle. So, we're going to get a little bit of the skin color. I'm going to water it down a little bit so that, that it's that yellowish skin color. I'm going to water it down. There we go. And we're going to put a, a little bit of the skin color as teeth. The watered down skin color. So her teeth move backwards into her mouth. So it's going to kind of curve up as it goes into her mouth. So it's small on the side. And then it's going to get bigger. It's going to come down. Teeth are so hard. Now this is watered down, so it'll dry a little bit 
darker. And you only see part of the last tooth. You don't even see the full, the whole thing. Okay. We're going to be putting shadow on her upper lip too because her upper lip right now is still that red, that bright red. I am just want to get the teeth done first because in case it goes over because already I think I went over. Getting a little bit of that darker color. I like accidentally painted over areas I did not mean to. Okay. So we're going to let that dry. We're going to do the darker color on the upper lip. So let's grab some of that darker color and in fact we might even darken this up a little bit more like I'm feeling like this isn't even dark enough yep it sure isn't so here's what we're gonna do I'm putting some of this dark color on her upper lip I'm gonna blend a little bit of the burnt sienna I mean not the burnt sienna this is that that oh yeah this was the burnt sienna yikes I'm gonna blend some of that in there this burnt sienna is like going a long ways though I mean it helped us get our eyes our eye color correct we only used it for that one color oops I had a little bit too much paint on my brush so I just cleaned off my brush and now I'm going to blend it with the red that I just put down. So on the right side, it's com it goes completely to the top. The dark color does. On the left side, Uh, we have a little bit of highlight there at the top. So it's not going to go all the way up. Okay. Thank you to everyone who's sticking in here with me. This is much longer than my normal streams. If you follow me um, and you do other classes with me, most of my streams are less than two hours. I, try, I, I intentionally try to. This is just longer because I'm doing something new. This is a considerably longer stream. But normally my streams are two hours, so I, I just want to set that expectation. I'm getting a little bit of the light red. I kind of covered up her highlight more than I should have, so I'm getting a little bit of light red, the lighter color red, and just forcing that highlight in there and then blending it. Okay. <laughs> now this right here, I almost want to do, it's very dark, but I almost want to put like a little bit of a, a rim of d super dark color and then I want to blend it. So what I did is I took um, my dark, like my paint's gray, and I came in here and then I'm going to blend it up. Because I feel like that's going to look better. It's not what the instructions are telling me to do, but I feel like it's going to end up looking better. I don't know, maybe not.
I mean, I'm blending it now, so it's starting to look better. So maybe I wasn't totally wrong for doing that. Does need to be blended. Can't leave that dark there. Okay. Okay. Good. That was a good decision. Not all of my decisions tonight have been good. <laughs> or effective, rather. I don't know. Good. Oh, this is tilted. Sorry. Okay. Now, it should be dry on the inside. We're going to take some watered-down white. Let me get some water there. Get a little bit of white in it and we're going to come over her teeth but just at the very front okay so i'm going to put a little bit of white and again this is all watered down just a little tiny bit I think I even went a little bit too far. Luckily it's watered down. All right, I'm gonna put just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. There. Ooh. I'm like not a fan of doing teeth. Ramir, why did you put teeth on your girl? You could have just made her lips closed and made our life easier, you know? Ramir just wasn't thinking ahead. Not at all. Um, I'm coming in with very, very light amount of Payne's Gray right at the bottom please do not ruin what I've already done and I'm just gonna blend this ever so slightly Whew. it's like really really close man I just want to, I really need one of my tiny brushes. I've got for, for doing, when I do oil paint, my oil painting professor used to make fun of me because I'd have these brushes that were like two hairs or something. They were tiny, but I would do lettering and stuff. Like, so I do this really intricate, tiny little details. And, and she always was amazed how I could get these little details. I'm like, well, I used a really tiny brush. Okay. I'm pretty good with the mouth. I feel like I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, I do have, there is a little tiny part that is bugging me and I don't think I have enough left of this color. So I'm going to mix a tiny bit of burnt sienna with a tiny bit of my uh, face color to make just like a darker because I don't have enough of this left. And I'm going to come in right. She's got like this little. Hold on. She's got this little area of darkness, like right next to her mouth. And that's not even looking like anything. Like you can't even see that. At all. So that was kind of useless. Maybe if I just put... Straight up burnt sienna right on top there. Burnt sienna is like my new darkening color, y'all. 
Yeah. That had no effect. So we're just going to pretend like nothing, none of it happened. We're just going to leave that alone. Leave it alone. This is one of those things. Bloody Wing, as an artist, you probably are familiar with this, but this perfectionist thing where we want something to look exactly a certain way, and so then we overwork it. <sighs> Such is the life of an artist. Okay, I'm ready for a new paper towel. I'm like burning up the environment today too. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's always better to just put it back and wait a little bit. Okay. So let's get a little bit of the watered down white. I see an area that needs it. Everything's drying on me because my paints are like, Sarah, we don't go this long normally. What's wrong with you? <laughs> normally I'm done in two hours. So my acrylic paints are starting to yell at me. Um, okay. So I'm going to, Oh no, wait, I can't even do that yet. Okay. Hang on. We have so much going on in the face that it's all right. Let's do this part here. We're going to blend this part, man. I think I like really missed some, some steps. So I'm blending this. I'm just watering down. I, I just watered down my, uh, I'm going to pick up some of my, nope, I'm not going to pick up my burnt sienna. I'm going to pick up my Payne's gray because that's the dark color here. And I'm just painting a little bit of Payne's gray because this is, we're going to use as a mixer, but it's not wet anymore. So I'm wetting that area with the Payne's gray. So I'm going to come in and blend with my skin color. So what I'm doing, oops, cleaning off my brush and I'm going to blend these two together. Oops. This was a much harder painting than I thought it was going to be. So, you know, there's that. I'm grabbing a little bit of my skin color and coming back in over here. And I may need to add a little bit of brown to this Payne's Gray. Because we did that before. What did we add to it? Did we just add straight up burnt sienna? Yeah, we did. Okay. All right. I'm adding some burnt sienna to my paints gray because it's, it's not blending very well with the, um, if you have true Payne's Gray, it's fine. But the Payne's Gray I created earlier is not blending very well with the um, skin color. And it's making it very blue, like tealish. Okay. So now that I have this corrected color in here, should be able to blend. And that's, yes. Yeah, that's going to look a lot better. So apparently burnt sienna was a key ingredient. So now you can see it's actually blending and not turning green. So that's nice. Okay. Um, let's do a little bit of Payne's Gray over this ear. 
We're going to water it down some. So it just darkens it a little bit. And I am also, I'm like loving this new Payne's Gray that I just made that's probably more accurate apparently. I'm going to come in here to like under her turban and I'm going to paint some of it in there. So it's going to darken this up a little bit. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to mix some more of this. But I'm really liking the color. So what this is, is this was like that original Payne's Gray color mixed with a little bit of the Burnt Sienna color that we made. And we've got A line at the top. Mine might be a little too watered down. I might have to make some more of it. So I didn't really make very much. All right. Bringing some skin color in. And I'm going to blend these two together. Oops, I don't know what, I guess a little bit of white got in there. So I'm blending now at the edge of my skin, like where the shadows are. I apologize if I'm jumping around a little bit. I, I'm, I do this sometimes like when I'm painting on my own without teaching. This is probably like the worst teaching painting I've ever done because it's almost like I'm just doing my regular painting, like when I'm painting on my own and just narrating it <laughs> rather than teaching. Um, but so what I'm doing now is I am, uh, I'm touching, I'm touching up my shadows basically. There you go. Girl with the pearl, pearl earring, ear, hello. Girl with the pearl earring, is that do you do that nobody wants? <laughs> Apparently. That is accurate. And welcome, Pistachio. I haven't seen you post yet so I don't know if you just came on or not but I like your screen name okay I'm gonna mix a little bit I'm gonna take my paint gray from earlier and I'm gonna make some more of it with the Sienna. Dude. Okay. My, my. Twenty twenty. It is twenty twenty. So I'm coming in here with my paint gray and I'm going around her eyes in my shadow area. And I'm bringing this this in. This is the newly mixed paint gray with a little bit of the burnt sienna in it.
you're old too. I don't think it sucks to be old. I mean, I wouldn't call myself old, but you know, I'm getting there. I'm older than a lot of the people I talk to and hang out with. I am old. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, I don't really think of myself as old. Accept it. Well, you know, I'm older for sure. So I'm bringing in the paints gray, but I'm not planning on keeping it this dark because that's like way more shadow. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and lighten it with a little bit of water. Are you an artist, Pistachio? Oops. Got a little bit of paint there. I oh, yeah, water there. Sorry. Okay. How long since I was in high school? A very long time. Um, gosh, how long has it been? Twenty four years. So All right, what I'm doing now is I'm blending my skin color with, I have a little bit on my um, brush and I'm just blending it with that Payne's Gray that I just did. <laughs> well, there you have it. It is proclaimed, I am old. <laughs> So bloody wing, I hopefully I'm, it's easier to follow me than I feel like it is. I feel like I'm just like going in all these different directions now. <laughs> it really doesn't though. I like the age that I'm at. I have a, a lot of wisdom I did not have in high school. So I don't regret my age at all. And next year, okay, cool. Thank you. Next year, I'm going to be a magic age, my favorite age. If anybody is at all familiar with uh, Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it's one of my absolute all-time favorite books. Um, there is a very special number in that book. And I am about to be that number in May. Well, I spend a good portion of the stream imparting wisdom. I don't know if it's useful to anybody, but I do it. Usually I talk a lot more about confidence and stuff than I really did this particular stream, but... Hmm. Go, go out to my Twitter. I've got a lot of wisdom out there. In fact, I feel like it's probably my wisest moments when I'm on Twitter. Maybe. Maybe. I, I accidentally went into my eye a little bit. So I'm just going to fix it. Okay. I'm spending, like, way too much time on, on some of this shadow stuff, so I need to lay off of it, sleep on it, so to speak, and move away from it.
Well, let's see. I want to pull in a little bit more of this skin color in here. So I'm just going to blend a little bit more of it in here. There we go. So then it's not so stark, that dark color. So pistachio, are you an artist or are you just visiting? Just to see what we're doing over here. maybe. Okay. I need some help. Because I feel like I've done something here. Maybe if I come in here with some of my skin color Maybe if I do that. Because she does have like this like kind of glow back here in the corner that goes almost to her ear, you know? So let's do this. We're going to bring some of our dark color in and some of our skin color in. And I'm just going to try to blend these. I feel like I kind of ruined her eye. I think it was better before. Meh. Bringing in some of my burnt sienna, my favorite uh, save right now. And I'm just mixing right directly on my canvas. If you're using the, the regular Payne's Gray, I feel like you'll probably be okay. So I'm coming in on the side here. So just want to keep in everyone, remind everyone that I do have kids that watch my program. So just keep it clean, please. I just asked that. Just a reminder. Okay, I think, well, okay, I'm going to bring some dark in right here and come up a little bit on the side. Blend it with skin color, and then I think we're going to be done with the face for now. This is just to get some darker color in here, because she, in the picture, there's a lot of what's called chiaroscuro. So I can go ahead and teach you about chiaroscuro. Fun art term that basically means very stark lights and darks. So chiaroscuro, it's spelled C H. I A K I A S C U R O maybe Kiara Skiro. That's what it kind of looks like. Anyway, uh, this 
a lot of artists use this, especially in the Renaissance. Um, I'm trying to think. I think Raphael was really good at that, particularly. Um, he was, he would do these like really amazing. I think it was Raphael. These really amazing, um, like very light and very dark. Like his lighting, I guess, is the best way to say it. It's like where you have this very stark lighting, like very, very light and very, very dark. It's called chiaroscuro. And it's just a technique that Renaissance artists especially used. Okay. There needs to be a lot of blending going on here that's not happening. I might do just a little bit of, of um, matte medium on a clean brush just to blend some stuff because it's just not blended. And I'm starting to kind of lose um, patience maybe? Is that the right word? I don't know. I'm, I'm not, once my streams go longer than two hours, I start to kind of lose, uh, the, the flow, I suppose. So there's a couple of options here. I have continued streams in the past where we didn't finish all in the same one, which would stink because we've already invested three hours of time or we just push through and just try to make it happen. I haven't decided yet. I just don't know. I would love if anybody had an opinion on that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is mix this together. I'm going to get some burnt sienna. I'm just pulling up all the color I have. My brush is very loaded with color. But I don't want to lose any of it because my color is really starting to dry. So I'm going to just paint what I have on here. Right at the I'm just coming in with my skin color. Whew. Hold on. I think I understand what's going on. I think maybe I need to be using my larger brush. Maybe that's why I'm having so many issues because I'm trying to do everything like these large areas with my small brush. I don't know. This definitely is not as successful as I was hoping it was going to turn out to be. That is faux show. I mean, I'm a good enough artist where if I'm doing this on my own, I will make it look like the picture. But the whole point was for me to teach you guys how to do it. So I want to make sure that you're getting the same, you're getting the benefit of the things that I would do to try to fix it, to try to fix like what's going wrong in the, um, in the painting. It definitely is, yeah, well, 
uh, thank you very much for joining. I'm sorry that it's um, that it took this long. Um, I I really really appreciate you joining though. And I'm thinking that maybe maybe I need to like call it, and I don't know. I'm trying to determine how close I am to finishing. Like maybe I just need to like continue this in another stream. What say you? What say you all? I mean, what do you guys think about that plan of just doing like a, a second stream at some point? Because it is, it's like nine o'clock here. So anybody who's following me on the East Coast Oh, thank you. Hey, while we're, to, to be continued, while we're out here, let me just pull this up. Hang on. Holy moly. That is fantastic. Okay. <laughs> okay, so there's been a couple of shares, which is pretty funny. So I'm in my Discord right now. And I've got um, a share that has uh, the girl with the kitty. That's very cute. Um, this is what Bloody Wing was working on. And I'm going to pull that up. That is really fantastic. So Bloody Wing clearly is a painter. And uh, it, they've got the back part of it, um, like the her headdress that she's got going on in the background. Um, it actually did that. So Bloody Wing was clearly looking at the, uh, not my reference photo, but the actual original. Now, uh, honestly, it looks like this one is done. So much farther along than mine. Um, as far as critique goes, I would say... I, I really don't actually have a whole lot of negative critique because it looks pretty good. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you did a great job. So thank you very much for joining. Um, I if you pro clearly didn't really need my lessons, but um, also were you using acrylic or were you using uh, oil? I mean, I guess you wouldn't have done it this fast if it was oil. Um, but that the brush strokes and the um you really like nailed the look of oil though which is pretty cool oh it's a digital painting okay okay all right i see i was thinking like man that really looks like oil okay it's a digital painting that is fantastic um that explains how you were able to catch up a little bit though because because you can probably paint a little faster with digital but your colors are really fantastic. So um, I really don't have anything negative to say about it. it. It's beautiful, you know, and it's it looks unique enough to where it's not exactly like the Vermeer. And yet still beautiful on its own. So, I mean, you gave her eyebrows. So that right there is different, you know, because the, the original doesn't have eyebrows. So it. Clearly it does. Uh, what, just out of curiosity, what do you paint in? Uh, yeah, she definitely looks very different with eyebrows. What, what, um, to software do you use? Cause that is a great brush tool. Might have to Okay. All right. I'm going to check that out and, it, and you can create your own brush tools. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to go back to the stream. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm really, really happy. And that is, and I'm really happy that you did it in digital because it just shows my viewers that um, you don't have to be painting with the acrylic that I'm doing. Like you don't have to do the exact 
thing that I'm doing and you can still get an amazing painting. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. I am going to call it a night, even though we're not done yet, because there is just really a lot to do here. And I, I feel like this needs to be done on a future stream. Um, I don't know how I'm going to parse this out, I guess, a, as a part one and part two on my, um, on my YouTube, because this just went on longer than, than, um, I planned. So thank you for joining. If anybody else followed, if you want to put what you've got right now, you can. All right. See you around. Um, thank you very much for joining and Thank you for saying my stream was relaxing. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and critique what I have so far, just so we know where to pick up next time. Okay. I'm looking at the original and um, I already mentioned that I wasn't a fan of the blue. There's a couple areas that where, you know, it needs to be fixed uh, like here, you know, that's like an easy fix. But then there's also, um, and that, when that dries, you won't be able to see it. Um, also it's like some, some of my shapes aren't really doing what I want them to do. So the, like, I clearly am having some issues with getting the colors of the shadows. Um, so like the shading in here, I'm, I was trying to use the Payne's gray as kind of a quick fix. Um, so this is a good lesson for my number two guideline, which is don't rush because as soon as you start rushing, you start making dumb mistakes. And I would call my use of this Payne's gray as my shadow rather than mixing the actual color that's in the picture. Uh, I, I was trying to find a quick fix. It could have been successful if I had all the time in the world to work on it. But as it is, we are over three hours and we're still not completely done. So what I'm going to do is break this up. I'm going to do a second stream. I appreciate everyone for following along with me. It's not completely unsuccessful. I don't think that it looks, it's clearly very different than the, the picture. Like it doesn't look exactly like the picture, but if somebody looked at it, especially once we get the pearl earring in there, they would say, Oh, that's a girl with a pearl earring but I do want to get it close to the painting. So we're going to break this up and do a second uh, stream. Probably I will do it tomorrow afternoon. So um, I'm just, I don't have a planned time. I'll probably just go on maybe around. Uh, I've got a, I'm actually going to a blacksmith guild meeting tomorrow and I'm pretty excited about that um, because they're actually, they've got, they're going to be firing stuff. So uh, I'm excited. So I uh, probably around 2 PM Eastern, if I had to guess. So I'll be back on the stream. If you're not able to join me tomorrow, then, uh, Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a special St. Patrick's day themed, uh, pot of shamrocks. So we're actually going to be doing painting on Tuesday. I normally do drawing, but I'm switching it up and doing painting in honor of St. Patrick's day. So if I don't see you tomorrow, hopefully I will see you on Tuesday. Thank you again for joining me and have a wonderful evening.